All right, what's going on everybody? Broken Games HDR back at it again with another video. So it's been two days since Microsoft and Xbox dropped one of the biggest bombs in gaming industry history by announcing the acquisition of uh, Activision Blizzard. And ever since then, the conversation, there's been several conversations of course, but one of the biggest conversations is regarding Sony PlayStation and how should they respond to this groundbreaking monumental acquisition, right? Because it obviously affects them. It affects the whole gaming industry. But um, people more so look at Microsoft and Sony as direct competitors in the gaming division, right? I know, you know, people say Microsoft is, is really trying to com compete with Apple and everybody else, you know, but... In this vacuum, in, the, in this arena, we're going to, obvi we obviously are talking about PlayStation and, uh, and, and Microsoft, right? So people are saying, how should Sony respond? You know, what should they do? Um, and a lot of people are giving their, their input and I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you mine, right? And what I'm going to propose is going to be uh, maybe an oversimplification of what they should do. Um, but that's the great thing about it. I'm the consumer. I don't work for Sony, don't work for PlayStation. So my job is really to tell you what I want as the consumer, right? Because after I name all of these things in a very simplistic fashion of what Sony and PlayStation should do, the question is going to be, well, BG, well, how do they do it? That's the great part once again. That's not my job to figure that out. It's the job of all the execs at PlayStation to figure out how to do these things. That's why they get paid the big bucks, right? Those big exec brains at PlayStation, listen, they haven't survived this long they haven't sold the most con the most home consoles ever by being idiots. They can figure this out. They can be competitive. That's not my job to figure out how they do it, right? That's their job. My job is to just propose what I want as a consumer. And, you know, since I'm in this gaming, you know, this gaming community and this gaming industry somewhat, I think I got a pulse on what the gamers want overall. So that's what I'm going to propose. So... When you have an issue, you know, first of all, you, you got you got to state what the problem is, right? So what is PlayStation's problem and issue right now um, as a result of this acquisition, right? Okay, so to, to put it very frankly, your problem is your opponent, Microsoft, purchased, you know, the publisher of argu arguably the most popular money generating multiplayer game on the market. You know, and, and obviously, you know, that affects PlayStation because a lot of people bought uh, Call of Duty on, on PlayStation, right? That's a lot, you know, a lot of their money came from people buying Call of Duty on PlayStation, right? And I only say arguably because, I don't know, uh, some people may say Fortnite might generate more money than Call of Duty. I don't know, but we know Call of Duty is top NPDs every single year. You know, Fortnite is, is free to play, but I don't know if they generate more money on the back end than what Call of Duty does on the front end. Whatever. You get the point. The Call of Duty is one of the one of the top money generating games, right? And now you don't have that anymore, right? So that that's the problem. And um in result of this acquisition, Microsoft now has Treyarch, Raven, High Moon. Uh, Infinity Ward, Toys for Bob, Beanock, Sledgehammer, Blizzard, and King. A lot of money generating games, right? And as a, and as a result of that, now PlayStation, I think, is at seventeen develop uh, game development studios, and Microsoft is at thirty. I think I saw the number might have been thirty two. Either way, um, they have almost. It's almost double what you have. I don't think it's uh, actually double, right? A little less than double. So those are the issues, right? That's that's the problem you face. Here's here's the thing about it, though, right? That you have to look at it. Your problem is not quality. Everybody knows that. N even with this acquisition, Play PlayStation still releases and still makes some of the 
best quality games in the industry. So your problem isn't quality. You don't you don't got to necessarily worry about that. Because one thing when you look at Activision Blizzard, one thing you've never heard anybody say is, well, maybe at some point in the early 2000s, maybe at that point, but recently you'll 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 never hear anybody say, "Hey, yeah, Activision makes some of the the best quality games in, on the market." Nobody's ever going to say that right now, right? But they make sellers. They make games that generate a lot of money and they make games that sell. So it's really a quantity and output issue that PlayStation has right now. It's quantity and output. You don't, people need to understand, you don't, PlayStation does not need to match exactly what Microsoft and Xbox is doing. I think that's the wrong approach. You don't need to exactly match what they're doing, right? You don't need to try to, and you can't anyway, you don't need to try to outspend or match their spending. You can't do that anyway. That, that's that's not the solution. You got to play chess, not checkers, right? You know, so, and, and, and people's knee-jerk reaction is, oh, buy a PlayStation needs to buy a publisher. I don't necessarily agree with that. In my opinion, that is the very last resort. I don't want PlayStation to buy a publisher. I'm, I'm, I'm overall against the whole just publisher arms race. I don't like it. It's, it's, I'm not for that. That's not how I think PlayStation should respond at all. I'm, I'm against that. But at the end of this video, I'm going to entertain that. And if they were going to buy a publisher, I'm going to entertain, you know, some ideas. But once again, I, I'm, I'm against that. So like I said, PlayStation's challenge is quantity and output. And people's knee-jerk reaction to Microsoft buying a publisher, or rather their second publisher, is, oh, PlayStation really needs to buy a publisher now, right? Well, and I get that thinking. It's like people might think if somebody bigger than you punches you, punch them back. And, you know, I'm not against that, but maybe you might want to sweep the leg first. Maybe that's the better option. Sweep the leg, bring them to the ground, you know, use the ground game. His ground game might be trash. Work to your strengths. Don't work to your opponent's, opponent's strengths. That's all I'm saying, right? There might be other ways around this with other than just buying, buying straight up a publisher. Like I said, I'm against. Play chess, not checkers. So let's talk about some solutions, right? And once again... I'm going to oversimplify this because I'm the consumer. It's up to PlayStation to figure out how to do this, right? Here are some solutions. You know, these are obvious things. And these are some things that PlayStation already does, right? Continue timed exclusivities, uh, exclu exclusive deals with, uh, with publishers and developers. Those still work for you, right? And I, I get people are, are, are make, bring up the point that, oh, you know, when Sony has had time deals and ex, some exclusivity deals, Microsoft has went and, and just bought that whole publisher, bought that whole developer. That absolutely happens, right? But at the same time, Microsoft can't keep buying publishers forever. I know some people are going to say, eh, well, maybe they could. Some, at, at some point, they, they would be stopped because of laws, regulations, and things like that. And I still don't believe, like, yeah, we heard rumors about um, Microsoft buying another publisher after, after Bethesda. And, you know, obviously that happened and it, was, and it was Activision. But I don't think this is something that's going to be perpetually ongoing, that they're just going to keep buying publishers. I just personally don't believe that, right? Um, so I still think you, you continue with the time... Uh, exclusivity deals, right? The next thing is partner with some studios that can make your IPs, right? Because PlayStation has a whole bunch of dormant IPs, right? That would still be successful. And I think those are the keys to them countering what Microsoft is doing. It's the, the key will always still be games and content, right? And they don't have enough studios to make, um, to make all these possible games, so you got a part. You still got to partner with some studios you have good relationships with uh, to make some of these games. And I, yes, I know, and I'm going to name some of those IPs. And yes, I know people are going to oh, people are going to bring up. Uh, some people are against anybody making a game other than the originator of the game. You got to let go of that. You, you got to let it go, right? 
It, it's not possible. You don't want Sony first party studios even going um, back and making their original games. It is possible. We've seen it before that a new developer takes over uh, what somebody originated and they do just as good of a job. It's it's possible. We you have to take the chance. You don't you don't have no choice but to take chances now. You have to, and you have to make these decisions quickly, right? So pl Sony has to open their wallet, obviously. That, that's part of it. Um, and because one of the reasons that this, this change, right, happened for Microsoft and Xbox is Microsoft decided to open their wallet. You know the whole situation with Phil Spencer and, and, and Satya Nadella and everything like that? He... Uh, Satya is Phil Spencer's boss and Phil Spencer convinced him to, I guess to convince the higher ups that listen pour more money into the Xbox di Xbox division right because Xbox has Microsoft has always had this money you got to realize that they've always had this money but they've oh but they've lacked content for a long time so why is that it's because I mean you could look it up Xbox stated themselves well Microsoft stated themselves they weren't convinced and didn't believe about uh, in Xbox and the and the gaming division. They wanted to sell it off at some point. They went from they went from wanting to sell it off to pouring all this investing all this money into Xbox. Like look look at that drastic change. That that's a huge polar opposite opposite flip because they convinced Xbox uh, Microsoft to open their wallet and actually invest in the gaming division. And of course the overall Microsoft wallet is big, right? Well, here's the thing. Sony obviously doesn't have as much money as uh, Microsoft, but we got to stop acting like Sony's broke, far from broke. They can invest in things, right? And they can obviously invest in themselves because you know what the, the biggest earner in uh, the biggest earner for Sony is it's the gaming division. It's the game. It, it's, it's not, it's not movies. It's it's not uh other it's not TVs it's not any other division or electronics they have it's gaming it's gaming and it doesn't take that long to figure out uh rev revenue generated from Sony's game and network services amounted to 25 billion U S dollars uh, in the company's 2020 fiscal year making it Sony's largest business segment games make PlayStation make Sony the most money. So you got to invest money back in that, right? I can understand if they wanted to be, you know, stingy and, you know, um, because PlayStation and games wasn't their biggest earner, but it is. So now that your opponent made such, such a drastic move, now y'all got to go get some, you know, money, more money from Sony to make certain moves. That's, that's, that's what they got to do, right? I think they need to build some more studios, obviously. And this is this is in conjunction with all the other things that I named, with partnering with other studios, you know, the, the timed ex, the timed exclusives, getting other studios to make your own IPs. Build a studio, build one or two studios from the ground up, right? You know, um PlayStation, I don't I don't remember the last time PlayStation has done that. I know they I think they built like a uh, support studio it might have been that Malaysia studio. I think they build that from the ground up and, and something else recently. Um, but you might need to do that. And of course, keep acquiring development studios, right? The studios that already e exist, which they, you know, obviously um, what they bought like four or five last year. You got to keep you got to keep doing you got to keep doing that. And I'm sure they're going to uh, keep keep doing that. Like I said, I'm against publishers. I'm against buying publishers, but buying independent developers who you work with, that's fine. Like I'm fine with Microsoft doing that. I'm fine with PlayStation doing that. I'm fine with anybody buying developers. It's just publishers that I felt like that's a little bit weird, right? Also, all of these studios have to be making multiple projects. One of the reasons I have an issue with Sony San Diego is pretty much that they they've owned they mainly been making MLB the show game yearly, which in and of itself, I think is, is stupid. I don't know why they only make MLB. I don't, I don't know why they make MLB the show in the first place. People say, people tell me it makes money. Okay. I guess whatever. But, and I, and I know the, the, 
the rumor is they're making a, an actual AAA game right now. Sony San Diego is outside of MLB the show, right? And they had worked on some um, AA game like back in 2014, and it was absolute garbage. I don't know what that is. But yeah, my point is all these studios that you own have to be working on multiple projects. They, they got to. Um, but the most important thing is to not sacrifice quality. Right. You, you got to increase output. You got to increase quantity. You got to increase frequency. But you got to do all this without sacrificing quality. Right. And let me just because I stated earlier about the dormant IPs. Let me just state some dormant IPs that Sony should consider. And, uh, and these are mainly going to be multiplayer games because here's the thing. Right. Because this goes back to last generation. Last generation, PlayStation was mainly making these single player experiences, which, which is great. And they sold like 10, 15, 20 million. Great. The problem with that, though, is single player games, even though some of them have additional content for you to buy or whatever. The problem with single player games from the business side. And yes, I'm mainly speaking from the consumer side, but got to touch on the business side a little bit. The problem with single player games is they're only making money when somebody buys the game. Multiplayer games, you make money, well, you know, when somebody buys the game, if there's an upfront, if there's an upfront cost, and it continually, perpetually makes money thereafter through microtransactions, content, what have you, right? Unless it's like free to play, then it only makes money on the back end, whatever, it continually, it continually generates money. One of the reasons that I've been screaming, hey, PlayStation last generation, y'all need to make some more multiplayer games. I mean, y'all charging us for PSN, make some more multiplayer games. What did PlayStation fans tell me? Oh, shut up, go play COD. Well, 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 well ain't that funny now? Well, well, won't you look at the landscape now? Even though, yes, COD for what we know is gonna still remain multi-plat for at least next year. Um, I don't know about after that, that's up to Microsoft. Some people think it's gonna stay uh, multi-plat, whatever. That that's irrelevant to the point. The point is, PlayStation dudes telling me, "Oh, shut up! They don't need to make multiplayer games. They don't need to do that. Just focus on single player." No, that's a problem. You need multiplayer games. You need both. Just like um, people were hounding Microsoft, "Hey, you need some great single player experiences, right?" We need y'all should have been hounded. PlayStation, oh, you need also need some great multiplayer experiences it's the same thing you need both to be the complete package you need both so some of these dormant ips that they should obviously um i think they should at least consider um for multiplayer games to bring back socom uh kill zone resistance i'm just throwing stuff out motor uh motorsport uh i think i said resistance um the order 1886 could could have a, a great multiplayer i believe um, other than, and, and of course, I'm not saying only make sing, uh, multiplayer games. You could bring back some single player stuff too. That'll, that'll be big. Uh, like of course we, we, people still waiting on Bloodborne. That's one of the highest requested things. Where's that at? Um, the getaway, that was a big game back on the PS2. People bring up Legend of Dragoon. They want that. And here's the thing, right? People talk about the risk and the analytics of bringing back some of these games. They're literally rebooting Twisted Metal. Twisted Metal was less popular than every single game I named. Every single one. Twisted Metal, David Jaffe said it himself. He said Twisted Metal was really only popular in certain parts of America. They couldn't get it. They couldn't get like a fan base in Europe or nowhere else. It wasn't, it wasn't a global game. They could, no matter how much they tried, they could not get that game to spread its popularity anywhere else. And even in America, Twisted, Twisted, look at the Twisted Metal sales for past games. They're not great. Even, even though I love them, I love Twisted Metal. That, that's, that's probably one of their least popular IPs. So you can't tell me, oh, don't bring back these games when they're bringing back Twisted Metal. These, these are less of a risk than Twisted Metal. So you can definitely bring those back. There's no excuse now. There's no excuse. See, you have to take risk now. You have to take risk because Microsoft made that move. Now you got to kind of like shoot, shoot everything at the wall and see what sticks. You got to take chances. You there's, there's really no, 
there's there's honestly no real like con or drawback. And I and I truly believe most of these games, if done right, if done by the right developer and their quality, these games would succeed in 2022 and beyond. You and you can't only like look at what the games did at their time. You got to realize like all PlayStation games are selling better than they ever did. Like when you when you look at God of War, right? God of War sold 20 million copies. 20 million. Look at the previous God of War sales. Nowhere near it. Nowhere near it. God like what a, even God of War 3. God of War 3 is is was the best selling one before God of War 2018. I don't even think that game sold 10 million. I'm pretty sure. It might have it might have stopped around 5 million. PlayStation games are selling these IPs are selling more than they ever have if you just do them right. So you should they really have to consider some of these IPs. The new generation would 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 like them. Um the old generation definitely would. If you want to make some of these multiplayer only, that's fine because the and, and if it's a budget problem, most of the budget in games goes towards the single player, the campaign. That's the most expensive part. The multiplayer is honestly the cheapest part to make. Developers have said that. Multiplayer is not expensive to make. It's single player. It's the campaign that's expensive. So if you want to make a multiplayer only kill zone, I think that's a good idea. If you want to make res resistance single player and multiplayer, because I think I would argue resistance had a better story. Um, and it, it, I think it has a higher ceiling, you know, narrative and lore wise than Killzone, even though Killzone's story is good, but they messed it up with Shadowfall. You get my point. Just evaluate and see what you should bring back and in what capacity. They, they've got a lot of IPs. They got, you know, they got good partners in the, in the industry. And then on top of that, we know they're, uh, they've funded, um, new uh completely new studios uh brand new ips tri they're supposed to be triple a games like haven studios that's that's being spearheaded by jade raymond I'm not, i don't remember exactly the uh, the ip but it's supposed to be some multiplayer game i think um deviation studios those are like x call of duty devs and x respawn devs and everything like that they're supposed to be making some triple a first person shooter um there's that so they have things working behind they there's things they're working on behind the scenes. And here's the thing about like call, you know, um these IPs that some people may be skeptical about, for like kill zone, like resistance. You want to know the worst way to con if you wanted to if you wanted to gain an audience in first person let's say a first person shooter audience uh because you lost Call of Duty. You know what the worst thing you could possibly do? is try to make another Call of Duty. C exact clones of games fail. Most of them fail. Don't try to make another Call of Duty. People are not looking for another Call of Duty. Regardless of how popular Call of Duty is, that's not what people are looking for. People are looking for something different. And regardless or not, if you, if you thought the best of Killzone or Resistance, you know what Killzone was? It was different. It was different. There's there's a hole and an opportunity in the market because a, a game is simply different. One of the reasons PUBG and and uh, and Fortnite was so popular, it was different. Now games, you know, now any battle royale game that comes out right now it doesn't stand a great chance. But at the time. Those games were breakout success. Yeah, there they were other elements that went into it. So people found it fun and addictive, but it was different. It was new. You can do something different and new with a lot of these IPs. Now, let me get to the publisher conversation, which, like I said so many times, I'm against. I guess if you wanted to, if, you, if, if I'm going to entertain the conversation of big publishers, the most obvious ones are Square Enix and Capcom. That's the ones that people bring up. The cheapest major publisher is Capcom. That's the cheapest one. I forgot what it was evaluated at, but it's it's the cheapest one. Capcom, Capcom could make sense because PlayStation, Sony owns Evo, which is which is the biggest fighting game tournament, 
every year, but you know, COVID has dampered that. And, you know, I think it's supposed to be all online, all online this year, but COVID has obviously um, rendered that with some issues. But still, if you have the biggest fighting game tournament and, and Street Fighter is literally the headline fighting game um, every single uh, Evo, it makes sense. I mean, if, you, if you're going to own... If you're going to own a fighting game tournament, you may as, well, may as well own a fighting game, right? And then there's Resident Evil and all those other IPs, you know. Okay. Square Enix, you know, then if you buy Square Enix, you have, you know, some, uh, you know, Final Fantasy and, and some other RPGs and stuff like that. That's why that could make sense, too. Like I said, I'm just, I'm just talking about all this stuff. I don't necessarily, I don't agree with buying publishers once again. And then there's smaller, uh, mid-sized publishers like um, Annapurna, um, Focus Entertainment, Devolver Digital, Five Hundred Five, uh, Warner Bros. is still there. I know. My, I think Microsoft was trying to buy Warner Bros. You know, there's and of course the other bigger ones are Konami, Ubisoft, and uh, well, you can't get Embracer Group. Um, there's uh, well, NetEase is in China. EA, people bring up EA because they think EA is the direct counter to uh, Activision because then you'll get Madden and, and FIFA, which are also yearly games like Call of Duty is, um, Bandai Namco, um, Sega, you know, you know I, but once again, I don't agree with any of those things. I don't think that's that's how you do it. I think that's that reaction is more panic. That reaction is is more, uh, you know, it, it's just not strategizing. It's more panic and, and, and fear and fear reactive type of uh, situation. And lastly, I'm going to touch on Spartacus. We know PlayStation is reorganizing uh, how, you know, PlayStation Plus, PlayStation Now and all that stuff. I don't, I, I don't think you have to match Game Pass. Um, I don't, I don't even think you have to put games day one, like your major first party games. I don't think you have to put it day one. I just think it has to be a great value and you do have to put some, some great content in there, right? I, I think it's about the value and the content, but I don't think it necessarily has to be this, this whole day one thing. I just think matching what Microsoft is doing is, is, is not the solution, but of course you have to be competitive. Listen, whatever Sony and PlayStation does, they have to do it now. They have to start setting it in motion now because the effects the effects of all these moves microsoft has been making publishers and all this stuff and developers it really doesn't come into effect until 2024 that's when you really that's when it re is really going to hit some of it you know you're going to it's going to hit 2023 but it's really 2024 so you better have shit together and planned out and in the pipeline 2024 so, and, and we, and they may have been putting things in, in, uh, in motion, like I said, um, and working behind the scenes, uh, for certain things because that, you know, like deviation studios and, and Haven, that might've been a, a reaction to some of those. And like I said, I don't know when, when a major acquisition like this is happening in the industry, I have a hard time believing that that other publishers don't know. I have a hard time believing. I don't, I don't, I think it would be very hard to keep that a complete secret. Like it may not leak out to us, but other publishers, I don't, I, I, I can't imagine this is this being a complete shock and secret to PlayStation, Nintendo. They, they've had, they had to like know and learn some, know something was happening, right? In some capacity, but I don't know. To, but to sum up this video, games it's, it's always going to come down to games it's always going to come down to games you got to make the games at an increased frequency capacity and output once again how they do it is up to them that's for them to figure out i'm just here waiting for them because i'm the consumer and i consume so yeah um that's really that's really all i i got to say um and we we got we got to we got to remember you know these play uh, all these PlayStation first party studios are working on multiple projects you know some of them we don't even know what they're working on they they got things coming 
there are things coming from all you know uh all these PlayStation developers. They they got stuff coming in the works. Um one of the thing one of the one of the challenges that PlayStation really is is dealing with with is this uh this uh chip um shortage with PS5s because they they they're 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 losing money by not being able to sell more PS5s. Uh, the demand is there, but the supply isn't there. And I can I can imagine that, you know, this generation may go like even two years longer for both Microsoft and and and, and Sony because of COVID and because of uh, shortage of supply. And you know, developers a lot of developers like some of their you know some of their games to be released when there's more of an install base, right? And because they're not going to generate as much sales as they could be because there's not enough PS5s out there. And then, and of course, PlayStation has PSVR coming. So all I'm saying is PlayStation has things going for it. It's not this whole doom and gloom thing that people are making out to be, but they do have to react. But not. Uh, but I just disagree in reacting in the way most people would say. I think you got to be nuanced about it. You got to be... You know, you got to move strategically. There's a complex way of going about this. Let me know what y'all think, though. I know this is a hella long video. Uh, let me know what y'all think. Follow me on Twitter. Hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. Um, let me know what you think about my thoughts. Uh, Weapon Will Podcast is this Sunday. It's going to be a good one. Um, hit the join button to support the channel. And, uh, yeah. Hit the notification bell as well so you can be part of a notification gang. I'm out of here. I'll catch y'all on the next video. Peace.